All right, 36 yard zero. I got asked a ton of questions on it. So I'm going to explain it to you. And then I'm also going to explain to you MPBR, which is a different type of zero. We'll talk about them both. Give you guys an idea on why I like the 36 yard zero for 5.56. Five, so I am going to caveat this 36 yard zero works out pretty well in my experience with several intermediate cartridges. Um, several cartridges that I would say were designed for the AR-15 platform. And then we'll talk about MPBR. But, <clears throat> 36 yard zero, the idea behind it with 5.56 five, ammo is to give you a very tight pattern out to 300 yards. An acceptable accuracy pattern out to 300 yards so when i'm talking acceptable accuracy there is some variance there we're talking you know six to seven inch variance out to 300 yards so any time that we zero i'm just gonna draw a couple of little things here say this is our rifle barrel and we shoot it Gravity starts working on our bullet immediately, and so we get a drop. That's how it works. Your bullet never actually flies up. So when anytime we zero, what we're doing is we're adjusting our line of sight, be it optic or open sights we're adjusting that and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna kind of diagram it like this this is exaggerated but we're adjusting our line of sight to meet up with the bullet at a given distance so say if we were doing a hundred yard zero that would be a hundred yards with the 36 yard zero, what we're trying to do is meet up with this point where our bullet and our line of sight hit together at 36 yards. Now, just due to the nature of this, our line of sight is going to cross at two different points. So this might be, let's say, 275 here. So we're, we're meeting up at roughly 36 yards and again at 275 yards. So we have a variance in between where anything before 36 yards, we're a little bit low. And anything up past 36 yards, we're a little bit high. Then we hit our line of sight again, and then past that, we're a little bit low. So we call that 300. So how this, how this works out with a 36 yard zero, and this is an actual chronograph with actual data on a 62 grain bullet with my current environmentals so we look at this our bolt weight is 62 grains the coefficient and this is off of the the military's coefficient they use a g1 and they call the coefficient on a m855 bullet 0 0.304 and then i chronoed at 2583 or 2853 excuse me so I've got a sight height of 2.5 inches, and then my basic environmentals. <clears throat> so we're only going to look at one column on here, and that column is our bullet drop. At zero, we're minus 2.5 inches, and then if we look down here at 300, we're minus 3.5 inches. So we cross line of sight at our near zero at 36 yards so i'm within two and a half inches from zero to 36 yards and then we're going to be above that line of sight 
out to where we cross again at roughly 260, I would guess maybe 260 yards-ish, okay? So if you look at the variance here, we kind of hit our peak right about here between 144 yards and 180 yards where we're going to be roughly three and a half four inches high but what that's giving me here is a pattern of less than eight inches so acceptable accuracy of about eight inches from zero to 300 yards meaning that when I set the zero up that way I'm within that eight inch circle or if I, I'm within that eight inch elevation <clears throat> so I don't really have to change much and I can guesstimate in between anything in between zero and 300 so I'm just changing that line of sight slightly at 300. If you notice that video that I did on the uh, EP8, I was shooting a target at 300 yards. I didn't change the holdover at all. And that's why. So it's a very effective combat zero for acceptable accuracy anywhere from zero to 300 yards. That's what the... That's what the 36 yard zero is all about. So the next thing I want to show you guys is maximum point blank range. And this is a this is a setup that I'm going to be changing for a rifle that I'm changing the optic on. I already have my velocity and I already know my coefficient. But I'm going to be changing the optic on it. I'm setting this up for max point blank range. So this is a free this is a free download you can get on your phone or you can go to their website. It's shooterscalculator.com and I have been using that for a very long time. But what we do is we're going to put in our environmentals, we're going to put in our coefficient, we're going to put in our velocity, and then right here we're going to Sorry, the phone cut out. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so right here we're going to put in what we want to call acceptable accuracy in inches. So that is going to be our vertical accuracy in inches. So if I want it to be 6 inches, we'll put in 6 here. If I want it to be 8 inches, 10 inches, whatever. So you can use this for a hunting setup or whatever. What that's going to give you is a point to zero at. In this case, I put in eight inches. It's telling me I want my near zero at 34 yards. So we're going to hit 34 yards. That's going to be our zero, our near zero. And 273 is going to be our far zero. So... Our minimum PBR and our maximum PBR, minimum PBR is going to be zero. We're going to be within that eight inches, and our max PBR is going to be 320 yards. So what does this all mean? Well, what it means is if my vitals are eight inches, I don't have to change my point of aim at all anywhere from zero to 320 yards and I'm still going to hit those vitals so it's a good way to set up for some cases and other cases you know you might want to use something different but you can still calculate precision shots based off of 34 yards you just change it in your calculator from a hundred yard zero to a 34 yard zero you're going to get the same freaking result so it's a good setup for certain situations for other situations you know maybe it, you want to go with a different route a lot of my long range rifles i still stay with a hundred yard zero
but that's what it is um that's the 36 yard zero and this is max point blank range again if you want to use this it's absolutely free i've been using it for a long time shooterscalculator.com and you need your coefficient you need your velocity and then you also need your environmentals and it's going to give you an output as to where to zero